In the name of the Father, <clears throat> and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, good morning. Good morning Let us thank God for gathering us together in this place. And today we have a special reason to thank God, because today is the 19th anniversary of Father Isle's ordination. Let us thank God for the gift of Father Al, the gift of his priesthood, and gift of his love towards this parish community, and all his wonderful services and hard work, especially during these days, he is putting into for the smooth functioning of our ministries here, for giving us a spiritual, a wonderful spiritual leadership for this parish community. Let us also pray for his intentions, for his parents, or his ministry. And let us thank God for for for, for all, for all the love we are receiving through him. And let, let us pray for his future ministries, his initiatives in this parish. Let us call to our mind our sinfulness and ask God pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, almighty and merciful God, that we may in truth receive a share in the resurrection of Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The crowd in Philippi joined in the attack on Paul and Silas, and the magistrates had them stripped and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After inflicting many blows on them, they threw them into prison and instructed the jailer to guard them securely. When he received these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and secured their feet to a stake. About midnight, while Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God as the prisoners listened, there was suddenly such a severe earthquake that the foundations of the jail shook. All the doors fell open, and the claims of all were pulled the chains of all were pulled loose. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself thinking that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted out in a loud voice, Do no harm to yourself. We are all here. He asked for a light and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus. And you will be, and your household will be saved. So they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to everyone in his house. 
He took them in at that hour of the night and bathed their wounds. Then he and all his family were baptized at once. He brought them up into his house and provided a meal, and with his household rejoined, rejoiced as having come to faith in God. The word of the Lord. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Because of your kindness and your truth, you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Alleluia, alleluia. I will send you the spirit of truth, says the Lord. He will guide you to all truth. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Now I am going to the one who sent me, and not one of you ask me, Where are you going? But because I told you this, grief has filled your hearts. But I tell you the truth. It is better for you that I go. For if I do not go, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world in regard to sin and righteousness and condemnation. Sin, because they do not believe in me. Righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will no longer see me. Condemnation, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's gospel reading, Jesus was like saying goodbye to his disciples. And hearing the news of their master's imminent departure, the disciples became sad and disheartened. So Jesus guarantees them that they will not be left alone. He will send the Holy Spirit upon them as a guide, teacher, counselor, and as a friend. So disciples seemed like, for the disciples, it seemed like abandonment. But Jesus says, he goes away for their good because the advocate, the Holy Spirit, will come upon them. And this is the fulfillment of the plan of incarnation. So we could say that Jesus is certainly not absent from us. In fact, Jesus is very present to us in every moment in the Holy Spirit. So the gift of the Holy Spirit means we do not rely on our own resources to reach God. What we have to do is to become better attuned to the wavelength of the Holy Spirit so that our lives will be shaped by the Holy Spirit. And this Spirit will show up in the shortcomings of the world, leading it into right relationship with the God and others, and convince the world that love alone is the ultimate value 
upon which we all will be judged. And this spirit of truth is not tied to any space and time. It is available to all generations. And it is available, this spirit is there all times. Whenever we need his help, he is there. Sometimes when we read the Bible, when we read a scripture passage, we may not be understanding what it says to us. In those times, let that not understanding be our prayer. Seek the Holy Spirit, ask him to help us, and he will be there to enlighten our minds, to empower us, to get the message from the passage, to lead accordingly. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, as we are preparing for the feast of Pentecost, let us invite the Holy Spirit into our lives. Let us be enlightened. Let us be empowered by his power. Amen. Amen. loving God. For our church, Pope Francis, and all clergy, that they be inspired by the Holy Spirit as they shepherd God's people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all civil leaders, that they govern for the common good, and to uphold the dignity of all persons, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those ill with the coronavirus, for those who have succumbed to it, and for all families who have lost loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of all first responders, medical personnel, and researchers in their united effort to overcome our present health crisis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the deceased, that they be welcomed by God's love and lavish mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, our divine physician, we ask you to guard and protect us from coronavirus, COVID-19, and all serious illness. For all that have died from it, have mercy. For those that are ill now, bring healing. For those searching for a remedy, enlighten them. For medical caregivers helping the sick, strengthen and shield them. For those, working to, for, for those working to contain the spread, grant them success. For those afraid, grant peace. May your precious blood be our defense and salvation. By your grace, may you turn the evil of disease into moments of consolation and hope. May we always fear the contagion of sin more than any illness. We abandon ourselves to your infinite mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed Harry, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. The humble spirit and comrade in our mediation sacrament each day, pleasing to you, Lord. Wash me, Lord, my iniquities and cleanse me my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of his holy, holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with the Paschal joy, every land, every people excels in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the found of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, our Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Philippe Estevez our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set it up houses, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. May this mainly embody Lord Jesus Christ and eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to a supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy under my roof. Truly, sir, the word, my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. Prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying God by your life. me and never be hungry eat this bread drink this cup trust in me and you will not thirst